Hi, Caitlin here uh, with another Crafty Hour with Mac uh, video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make these fun cards using a paper folding technique called iris folding. Um, I promise it's a lot uh, simpler than it looks. Um, so we're going to have the patterns up on our website, MediaArtsCouncil.org. Um, and I also am going to have, in addition to these this size, I'm going to have enlarged versions. So if anyone has a little artist at home that maybe uh, thinks that this might be a little too difficult for them, you can uh, print out one of the larger ones. It's 8.5 by 11. Um, this is just a piece of plain cardstock. Uh, they can do the pattern and then, you know, go to town decorating outside. I just use scrap pieces of paper to decorate mine. Um, I decided to do a dogs and cats as my patterns for this video uh, because each week Mac's been trying to highlight different businesses and local organizations um, that can, you know, to support during this time. Uh, and I wanted this week to highlight the Providence Animal Center. Um, they're still working really hard, even throughout these difficult times, to continue to save dogs and cats. Um, and they can really use your support. Um, they have a really great online auction going on right now uh, till May 5th, sit, stay at home online auction. Um, so go definitely go check that out. Go to their website um, and uh, just look at the different options they've got. Uh, let's see, they got watercolor pet portraits, um, some fun bags. Lots of fun uh, alcohol themed gift baskets. They've got um, virtual yoga, some animal reiki, uh, lots of really great um, things to bid on. So definitely check that out. Um, and if you don't see anything to bid on, maybe you can just um, give them a small donation. Uh, anything helps. So maybe you can't give a lot right now, but you can give a little bit. Um, every little bit will help them continue to save all those dogs and cats that they save every year. Um, staying on the animal theme, I got my Chaco Cat Pale Ale from 2SP. Um, 2SP is over in Aston, another local brewer, um, and they're doing curbside. Uh, super easy, just give them a call. Uh, I believe it's one to seven every day that they're doing it. Um, go check out their Facebook, their website, uh, and their Instagram for all their latest uh, specials and offerings. All right. So, um, for this, so you'll need a few supplies. So, you'll need some scotch tape. Um, I recommend some crafting scissors. Um, cutting out the initial step is a little difficult if you don't have um, the, the smaller scissors. Uh, you can probably do it with some pointy, larger scissors. Um, some cardstock, okay, and then, alright, so, and then, um, I, for the paper, I like to, you want to use a thinner paper, so regular copy, colored copy paper is fine, um, I really love using, uh, wrapping paper, um, it's just, it's nice and thin, you can get some, like, thicker wrapping paper, it's, that's really nice. Uh, comes in all kinds of fun colors and patterns. Um, also, origami paper works really well. Or um, if you get some some ribbon, um, that would also work really well. So the first step uh, with your pattern, I like to secure my pattern to whatever surface I'm working on. So I just like to so it stays uh, stays down for me the whole time. So I. Um, I buy my cardstock and I cut it down to fit the blank cards. I get my blank cards at Michael's. Um, I've seen them for sale on Etsy and Amazon. Um, you can get them. Really any kind of blank cards would work. Um, I cut my cardstock to uh, four and a half by six inches. I just like the way it fills out the card. Um, you can make adjustments depending on what kind of cards you get. I've seen smaller cards that I just will shrink down my patterns um, to fit. So uh, the first step um, is, so you can do it two ways. One, you could just print out two copies and cut this out. That's totally fine. Um, I, if you're making a lot of cards, I like to make 
a uh, little stencil. So you can either put like a thin piece of paper um, and do that, or if you cut it out and then trace it. Um, I like to use cardstock, or I actually like to recycle um, old folders uh, that I, you know, have already used or whatever. Um, they hold up pretty nice. So um, you always want to make sure that your um, animal is facing the, the same way as your pattern. Um, so like I wouldn't want to do it this way. Uh, so I always write this side up on my pad my uh, stencils. And then if you're using um, a piece of cardstock that like this one where it has a pattern on one side and has white on the other side, you'll always want the pattern side down because um, that's this you're gonna do your you're gonna do everything on the back and then this is what is gonna show. So you always want to make sure you're that way. If it's if it's a double-sided piece of cardstock, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I got my white side, and then I'm just gonna trace my little dog here. And then, so to cut this out, you don't want to cut your cardstock. Um, you just want to like sort of fold it a little bit and poke a hole in it. And then that way you can cut around and still have your your piece of cardstock border still intact. So I usually cut out the middle and then I sort of work in to get my details. So see, this is where um, having the smaller scissors is a little bit easier, a little difficult, um, especially with the cat pattern. Um, that's got some smaller corners you gotta cut, so having the smaller scissors definitely helps. Um, my dog so I'm just gonna line it up so it's not perfect but that's okay um, and then I like to tape this down to try not to tape too much um, onto it just in case it gets sometimes the tape gets stuck and you don't want to mess up too much of your your card okay so um, with each of these it tells you um, there's Actually, I think both patterns have four. Um, if you go online and look for other patterns, sometimes it's three, um, sometimes it's more. Uh, usually four is the, the general thing. Um, so you could do four different colors. I like to usually do either two colors or I like to do a lot that are just like all solid. Um, as you can still see the iris folding, it's really um, your personal preference. So for this one, I am going to be using these two. Um, I already have my strips cut. Um, usually you want to cut it about one inch, uh, one inch wide. Um, these are probably not, these definitely aren't exactly one inches. Um, I definitely eyeball it at this point. Um, so you want to, once you, you want to take your strips, I usually just line it up and then cut it. And then, so this is, this is the key. So you're folding it. That doesn't have to be exactly in half. Um, you just want to make sure that this is enough to cover this area. Um, so you want to line up your fold. So you want to line up your fold on to your first line. So number one, I'm going to line that up. And then, so that's what it's going to look, on, look like on the other side. So you want to make sure you're lining up the folds and not the other half because then it, it won't look as nice. Alright, so then I'm just going to follow the pattern. Um, 
if you're trying to visualize what it might look like, especially when you first start out, sometimes it's uh, easy to easier to color in the area. So I would color in one, two, three, four, five, six, and then 28. Um, this one's a little weird. Uh, and then so you can sort of visualize where your pieces are going. Um, and so, but I uh, I'm not gonna color it in. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going and following my pattern. both patterns um, I will show you the last step um, so you just need a glue stick um, depending on your paper um, sometimes the more delicate paper um, I'll I like to use double-sided tape I'll do like the border and then put glue on the inside um, so it's really just uh, personal preference both of these are easy to do with just glue um, so and you can also if you want um, use some decorative scissors like these guys um, to create a decorative border like I did on this one um, all right so I'm just gonna flip it over and you want to get glue on the whole thing um, I like to have a piece of scrap paper because obviously I'm getting glue all over the place um, and you don't want to get that on your table to try and make it as straight as possible but um, I tell myself that if it's not perfectly straight um, then you can just tell it's it's handmade um, and then I like to flatten it If you're doing more than one, try to not be as messy as I was, um, and try to not stick your card in the glue. Um, usually it just dries fine, but sometimes it'll show up on some of the more delicate paper. Alright, get a nice good coating. two cards and then so what I like to do is I actually like to stick them um, at least overnight if not for a couple days in between some heavy books um, some books and then maybe put some right now I have a stack of books and I have my my paint bag on top of it to give it some extra weight um, but it just sort of flattens it out because especially depending on what paper you use um, some of the patterns can get a little thick um, so just flattening it out makes it um, makes everything stay a little bit nicer but all right, there you go, Iris Folded Cards. Um, be sure to check out our website um, for the links to the patterns. Um, I didn't design either of the patterns. Um, the one I just found on Pinterest, 
The other one came from a website that unfortunately uh, no longer exists when I went to check it called Circle of Crafters. Um, but you can find a bunch of them on Pinterest. Um, if you just search iris folding pattern and then, you know, cat, dog, um, guitar, anything, uh, there's tons of patterns out there. Uh, so definitely check those out. Um, and be sure to visit the Providence Animal Center website um, and 2SP's website. Alright, have a great day.